bell rings, we welcome you to worship today here on this World Communion Sunday. Churches of multiple denominations all through the world will gather together on this day and share communion as a symbol of our unity. I call your attention to the other announcements printed in the bulletin. Barb Swank's great-granddaughter is having a first celebration of birthdays at the care center where Barb resides, specialty care, and she wanted me to announce it if anyone wanted to come. So I'm announcing it to you today. Barb Swank's great-grandchild, first birthday, they're celebrating at Preston Specialty Care just afternoon today. I have no idea if there's food, if there's cake, if there's drink, but you're invited. Call your attention to the other announcements, prayer meeting, Good News Club, Bible study in Sharpsburg. And then remember what next Sunday, the session has set up a pastor appreciation potluck after worship here. Are there other announcements that need to be made? Then let us worship God. Our song of preparation is printed in your bulletin. It's found on page one, or rather on 44, if you'd like the words, but they're also printed right there in your book. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will
people, come on down to our children's message. Peace. 
And that's exactly what happened. And then guess what happened in a couple of weeks? Nabal died of a heart attack. His heart grew cold, even colder than it was, the Bible said. In fact, it turned to stone, and he died. So David went back and said, Hey, Abigail, you want to be my wife? And they were married, and they lived happily. No, that's a fairy tale. <laughs> anyway, Abigail became a wife of David. But what we want to celebrate today is her being a peacemaker. Going to David when he was too angry to do God's work and wanted to do the human work of taking revenge. She turned him away. She was a peacemaker. And so we want to sing a song that Jesus wrote. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the children of God. And it goes kind of like this. Blessed are the peacemakers, the peacemakers, the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the children of God. They are the children of God. They are the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, the peacemakers, the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, but they are the children of God. Okay, you've learned it. Are you ready to sing it with me? Congregation, you can help us because our numbers are few this morning. Here we go. Blessed are the peacemakers, the peacemakers, the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the children of God. They are the children of God. They are the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, the peacemakers. today because it's communion and we want you to be a part of it today. Thank you for coming up. By the way, there's a picture in there of a king and a queen so you can pretend it's David and Abigail. You may go to your seats. <coughs> Special joys and concerns today. Betty. Patty's brother they found a brain tumor. They did surgery. He seems to have come through pretty well. Is that right, Patty? Not full results yet, but we're hopeful. Let's lift up her sister-in-law, her name? Joyce. Joyce Gray. Are there others today? Jasmine Evelyn Turner, born to Allie. On Monday, Allie and Kai, her husband, we celebrate the birth of Jasmine, and we celebrate April's birthday. How about Robin? I looked at Robin and said April. <laughs> Don't know where my head is today. Robin T. We lift them 
up. Others today to be remembered? Continue to remember Janine. Not too long since Tom's funeral. Continue to remember Jackie. I was able to go to Eldora yeah, last Sunday and participate in the final little closing prayer service after the death of her daughter, Ken Lynn. So if we would lift up Jackie and Carol, Janine and family, and all those who are mourning.
to thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this point, I'm going to call on Rita to give us our Bible reading marathon minute for mission. I'll invite her to come up here to the microphone. Okay, well, John asked if I would share so I could give my perspective on being a part of the Bible Reading Marathon, which is going to be held this Saturday, October the 7th, and it'll be from um, 8 until um, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It's in either the park here in Lenox, or it will be at the courtyard in Bedford, at the, I mean, at the courthouse in Bedford. So, um, I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, what it's meant to me. Um, it's been going on since about 2016, and it's just a good time to sit and take time to read the word out loud. That kind of slows you down and enables you to think more about what you're reading, and it's always a blessing. And there's a couple of verses I wanted to share that talk about the importance of God's word and how it never is in vain if we, if we speak it. So in Isaiah 55, um, verses 10 and 11, it says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth that will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So we hope as many of you as can come. I've looked at the forecast. It looks like it's going to be a good day, kind of crisp and cool and, and sunny, and it should be a really great day for reading, and you can come anytime. Uh, people will be asked to read the book of the New Testament. Some are very short and just take a few minutes, and others can take longer. So we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks. Today is also the day for the peacemaking offering, and your envelopes that were in your bulletin say one great hour of sharing. They sent us too many envelopes in the spring, so we economized or didn't order any for this afternoon, or for today, for the peacemaking. So, if it says one great hour of sharing today, it's peacemaking offering. Let us receive our morning tithes and offerings. Our first scripture reading today is from Ezekiel chapter 
chapter 18, verses 25 through 32. Now, earlier in chapter 18, the Lord tells these, the prophet Ezekiel that all lives belong to God, and they are um, only a person who sins shall die. So a child shall not die because of their parents' sins, nor shall a parent die because of his child's sins. So here's what God has to say in verses 25 through 32. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of, of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit inequity, they shall die for it. For the inequity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness that they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they... They considered and turned away from the transgressions that they committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, inequity will be your ruin. Cast away from you the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. And our second scripture is from Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. This is the parable of the two sons. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and he said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. The father went to the second, said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Get yourself a new heart. I've been pondering that phrase all week. Given that I come from a family with some history of heart problems. My grandpa Bill, my mother's father, dropped dead of a heart attack suddenly in his 60s. My mother now 90 years old, has struggled with her heart for some 10 years. A heart attack at age 80, congestive heart failure, a pacemaker put in. And even today as I spoke with her, not sure that the heart is acting exactly as it should. She's been to the cardiologist and will get her report on Tuesday. But when Ezekiel the prophet says to the people, and Christie explained it so well, that there was a saying in Israel, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set an edge, which was taken to mean, you know what, if the parents are no good, the kids are no good. On the other hand, if the parents are good, the kids have to turn out well. Not so, said God through Ezekiel. Sometimes wonderful parents, well, their kids turn away from their teachings. And sometimes the parents do a lousy job, but the kids turn out well anyway. Let each person be judged according to how they act, children and parents alike. But what Ezekiel said to the people was, 
You all need a new heart and a new spirit. But he wasn't talking about a transplant. You see, in the Old Testament, especially among the Jews, the heart was seen as the center of the human spirit. That our actions came from the heart. That those who are cold-hearted or those who are hard-hearted don't end up doing the will of God, but rather those who are tender-hearted, those who are warm-hearted. To explain it using our children's message for this morning, Nabal was hard-hearted, stingy, refusing to be generous. David was cold-hearted, ready to take revenge at the drop of a hat. It was Abigail who tried with her husband and was successful with David to get him to change his heart, to turn away from what he had been planning to do, to come to a new realization. What is it that it takes to do the will of God? It takes a new heart and a new spirit. You see, the Bible teaches that since Adam and Eve fell into sin, so the human heart has often been filled with restless evil. Therefore, human beings are called to change their hearts. God desires that we change our hearts, Ezekiel said. God desires that no one should perish, but wants all to be saved. But we can't change our hearts in and of our own power. We need the Spirit of God to enter, to give us a new heart. The Holy Spirit that proceeds from the Father and the Son is that which we invite to enter. In fact, there's a beautiful song. Into my heart, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. That prayer, or that song, is actually a prayer of repentance, reminding us that we need to change our hearts. Well, when we switch to the New Testament, suddenly we're talking about the mind instead of the heart. The Apostle Paul, and also Jesus, lived in a world of the Greeks, the Jews thought that the heart was the center of emotions and you make your decisions from the heart. The Greeks thought that it came from the mind. And therefore, we'll find in the New Testament the need that we change our minds as well as our hearts. And so Jesus tells the parable about the two sons. The one who says, I will do what you ask, Father and then does nothing at all. While the other says, I will not go, and then changes and does the will of the Father. Now it's clear that both of these sons have sinful tendencies. One is disobedient, refusing to do what the Father wants. The other is either a liar or fails to follow through on his commitments. Both of them have problems, but it's the one who changes his heart, who changes his mind, who is commended, who goes to work in the vineyard. Mind you, Jesus says that this parable is actually about the scribes and the Pharisees who listened to John the Baptist, but refused to do what John said. And John's central message was, repent, change, turn around, the kingdom of God is at hand. <coughs> the hearts that are hardest to change are the hard or cold hearts. 
who aren't seen by the one who possesses them as needing any change. Those who are hard-hearted and cold-hearted but think they're doing the will of God, or those are the ones that Jesus is talking to, perhaps even you and me. But today's parable leads us to a key question. What is the work of the vineyard? What is it that God is calling all sons and daughters to do? A lot of people answer that question in a lot of different ways, hence different churches with different ways of doing the work of the Lord. But the third scripture reading that I didn't have Christy read yet is Philippians 2, 1 to 5, which I think lets us know what is the work of the vineyard? Christy, would you read? No. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. There you have it from the Apostle Paul. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Or to put it in the Hebrew terminology, let the same heart be in you that was in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul doesn't leave us to guess what it is that was in Christ's heart. If there is any encouragement like Christ gave, if there is any love like Christ showed, if there is any consolation like Christ offered, if there is any compassion or sympathy like Christ felt, if there is any humility, which was the overriding attitude of Jesus Christ, let these things be in you, Paul says, but as for conceit and selfish ambition, We'll get rid of them. For no one who is focused on self can have the interest of God or others at hand. I started to ask, so which of the two sons is more like you? Until it occurred to me as I read this passage yet again, that most of us are both of the sons in Jesus' parable. There's times that God speaks to us clearly. Visit your neighbor. Take care of the children who are hungry. Help out with Sunday school. Show a special concern for widows and orphans. And we say, I'll do it. And then that night before bed, suddenly we realize we've done none of the things that we planned to do. Our intentions were good, but our actions fell short. There are other times that God puts it on our heart to do something and we say, no way. I am not going to see that person. No, I am not going to offer forgiveness. No, those people who are begging on the streets, well, they could have gotten their acts together on their own. No, I will not go and do the work of the vineyard. But then something moves in us, and our hearts change, and we do what God wants us to do. We are both sons. Sometimes obedient, sometimes disobedient. Sometimes hard-hearted and cold-hearted, and yet our hearts are strangely warmed by the Holy Spirit moving in us. 
to change us. The message from all three passages today is clear. Change your heart. Change your mind. Let the same heart and mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. It's not always easy. I still remember a member of my church down in Blackie, Kentucky, who served the Lord daily. She was our piano player, our choir singer, a Sunday school teacher, worked in the library, invited people to church, did outreach work, worked with the youth. But one day at her own home dealing with teenage daughters, she exploded. And I guess called them some things that she shouldn't have said, punished them in ways that were maybe a little too harsh. And just for good measure, she punished her pre-teenage son too. As he went to his room, he stopped and turned around and said, Mom, I think sometimes you're just half a Christian. And then he went into his room. Ah, uh, there we have it, the parable of the two sons, each of them who needed change. Sometimes we're just half a Christian, but if we invite the Holy Spirit of God inside, if we ask God to change our hearts and minds, then we can trust that God will do it. But sometimes we need a little grace ahead of time. And so today, the table is set. God's grace comes to us today in the form of bread and juice symbolizing the body and blood of Jesus Christ, his body broken for us, his blood shed for us. Let us receive God's grace that we might go forth to do Christ's will. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, Jesus said that men and women would come from north and south and east and west and would gather together around the table in the kingdom of God. And so we invite all of you and your children to share in this holy feast. With the elders serving on session who are present, please come forward. May be seated. Let us pray. Kind and merciful God, you have called us to work in your vineyard, and sometimes we go but do little, and other times we promise to go and yet do not. Forgive us, Lord, change our hearts and our minds. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that these common elements might become for us in spirit the body and blood of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the loaf. He broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also, he took up the cup, and he poured, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant of my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink, all of you, in remembrance of me. In each tray, multiple times of bread, and in the middle, gluten-free. Please hold the bread after you have been served, that we might all eat together.
for you. Take, <coughs> eat this, all of you, in remembrance of me. Let us eat together.
and serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.